Welcome to the next video in the user form series. We're going to get straight into the spreadsheet this time. Let's just remind ourselves what we're trying to do. This is the same file I was working on in the previous video. So we want to be able to hit this edit button to select a name uh, from this list and then hit continue. And then we want uh, the details that relate to that person to flash up in the user form. And we can see that on the completed file that which you can download from the website, the completed file. If I hit, if I hit edit, uh, let's go for Alison here, continue. Alison's details, and I can just check the details in the database. Now, Alison's details loaded into the user form. I can make some edits here. Let's just change her age to 25, hit continue. And I can see that Alison's details have been edited there. So this is what we're trying to do. And in the last video, we made some progress. Just going back to the file from the previous video. We're making some progress here. We've got an idea about where the entry is in the database. Now, it sounds like quite a complicated task to get the details out of the database into the user form. It might be something you've never done before. So before we get into the coding, it's worth having a bit of a look around what we've done so far to understand what might be useful for us in completing this task. A good starting point is this number here. So let's go and find this code in the Visual Basic Editor. Working with multiple files here, so I'm going to close down the objects from the file I don't want. And uh, this is the user form that gives us uh, this menu. So if we hit the Continue button here, we have this target row variable. Now this is the variable that is flashing up the number in the message box. Now this, this is definitely going to be useful to us because we need to have a sense of position uh, where in the database this person's details are. But this isn't going to do everything for us. Clearly we need more than this. We need to get the details from the database into the user form as well. That sounds complicated, but again, it's a good idea to think what have we got already that might help us. It sounds complicated, but it's actually similar to what we've done already in this series because we've already done the reverse of that process. We've already taken details from a user form into a database. So why don't we try to recycle some of that code? Maybe we can tweak it, get it working for us. So I'm going to go and grab some of that code. I'll go to the data UF user form. This is the first user form that we built uh, in the series. And the continue button, remember this is the button we click to get the information from the user form into the database. And then what might be useful to us here, just going down through the code. Now I'm interested in these lines of code here and you can see because I've got some green annotations in here, I can quickly understand what the code's doing. But I'm interested in this line of code because looking at the code, I can tell that it's making a value in the database equal to something in the user form. So it's doing the reverse of what we're looking to do now. So this might be useful to us. So I'm going to copy paste this, recycle something that I know works. I'm going to go back to the user form where we can select somebody to edit. Just going to drop it in here uh, for the time being. And this is, you know, a good start. Clearly, we've got to do some more work on this code, but it's always better to recycle something or to use something else and then tweak it. That's always better than starting with a blank sheet where it can be very difficult to get started. So I know I want to kind of reverse uh, this process here. But this isn't quite this isn't quite the right line of code that I was looking for. I think this one is going to be slightly more uh, useful. That's because this line of code this line of code is is putting a reference um, in the first column of the database here, and I'd rather have a line of code that's actually interacting with something uh, in the user form. Anyway, these two lines of code are definitely helpful. And I know that we want to do the reverse of this process. So I'm very simply going to just uh, reverse this. So take uh, the object. So this object relates to this first piece of code here. The first piece of code here relates to something uh, in 
the user form. So we're saying make something in the user form equal to something in the spreadsheet. So this looks like a good start. So let's give ourselves something easy to do first. So let's say we want the first name. We want the first name from the database to appear uh, in the user form. Now at this point, it's also worth discussing, you know, which user form we're going to use. It would be an option, of course, to create a new user form. We could have one user form to add a name and a separate user form to edit a name. That would be possible, but that would represent a duplication of efforts. We'd have to create another user form that's very similar. And if we wanted to tweak the user form, or if we had a problem with the user form, then we might have a situation where we were changing code in two different places. So rather than, rather than having two separate user forms doing a very similar thing, it's much better for us to use the same user form and to get it doing two different things. That's going to be our approach here. So this is the user form we want to manipulate. We want to get the person's details appearing in this user form. So we're looking at first name first. And yep, the name of the text box here, looking in the properties uh, window in the bottom left is text first. So I'm going to go back to the code here. Find entry unit UF. There we go. So I think this is this is looking good. I think we should just try this. And let's just let's just see what happens here. So I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet, edit button. Let's choose Julia. First entry in the spreadsheet, just hitting continue. Okay, there we go. We do have an error message here. Now I'm pretty sure this is because I need to specify the user form now because the user form is not loaded up in the spreadsheet yet. So I need to give the name of the user form here. So data underscore UF dot. So using a dot to connect two objects together. In this tech case, connecting the user form with a text box on the user form. So let's see how this goes back to the spreadsheet edit, select the first entry in the database, just hitting the continue button. So nothing's happened yet. So let's go back to the code. And that seems to make sense because we need to tell Excel to flash up the user form to load up the user form. We haven't got that line of code in yet. So let's just try data underscore UF dot show. We know this is the line of code to get the user form to load up. To display. Then let's give this a go, edit, select Julia's name again. Okay, and now we've got the user form loaded up and Julia's name is in here. So this seems to have worked. So can we just duplicate uh, this line of code to get the other elements loading in? So here we've got uh, text first. So text first is the name of the text box uh, in the user form where the person's first name goes. So let's try text surname here. And then I'm going to have to do something to this line of code. Remember, this line of code is using offset to find the position, find a point in the database. In this case, it's offsetting from data start, which is the name of a cell in the spreadsheet. Data start is here. It's offsetting the number of rows determined by target row. That's the variable we specified in the previous video. Then how many columns is it going across? That's specified by the second value in the brackets here. So the first name is one column across. So the surname is going to be two columns across. Very simply, adjust the code here and then let's give that a go. So edit, let's go for Julia again and there we go. Then we've got the first name and the surname appearing. There's one thing for us to bear in mind here. I'm just going to close the user form for now. Don't hit the continue button for now because in subsequent videos we're going to see how we have to manage the continue button with a little bit more precision to get it editing an entry rather than adding a new entry. So just close the user form for now. Then we can see the previous user form is still B2. 
being displayed here. So we need a line of code to make the previous user form uh, disappear. So let's try, we know unload. Unload is going to help us, well, is going to make a user form disappear. So unload data UF. This should unload the user form to select a name. Okay, I'm going to put some more annotations here. Let's say begin retrieving data from database. There we go. Complete that annotation and then recycle the annotation too to indicate where I begin this process and where I end this process. So putting annotations in as we go along, that's going to help us understand. So now we're expecting to go through the same process here. Let's try Alison this time. And now if I close the user form, okay, the previous user form is still appearing there. So what's happened there? Okay, unload data UF. Okay, so I've got the wrong, the wrong user form in there. So I should be saying unload find entry UF. So find entry is the user form that allows us to find an entry, select an entry in the database. So let's give this a go now. Edit, let's try Shannon this time. There we go, Shannon Smith in the database. Close this user form and I can see the previous user form is now closed. So you can see how I did that code by no means perfect, but I was experimenting with some code, putting it in, tweaking it, and then just seeing what happened understanding the error messages if they came then improving the code that kind of iterative process i think is is the best way to work with code as long as you make sure you save the file back up the file uh, as you go along so this seems to be uh, working pretty well and let's just look at the original user form again so all of these text boxes i can populate using a very similar line of code to the code we've already looked at in this video. Now this, uh, the yes, no option buttons, these are gonna be a little bit more uh, complex. They're gonna require a conditional statement. So let's deal with those. And again, I'm gonna go back to the code from earlier in the video series, recycle the code that manages these option buttons. I can quickly tell from the annotations, annotations helping us again there. Then, then back to find entry user form. Just gonna drop the code in here. I know it's gonna take some, definitely gonna take some tweaking here. Okay, so, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to flip around if you like uh, this line of code with this line of code. Okay, there we go. It's going to make the Visual Basic, Visual Basic Editor a little bit bigger there. Okay, and then this line of code we can now delete. Okay, and then recycle this line of code. I'll talk you through what's going on here in a second. I think this looks pretty good. I'm just going to check the name of these option boxes in the user form. Yeah, we've got option Y child, option N child. I'm happy with that. Back to the code we're looking at. Okay, there we go. So let's, let's give this a go. So what is going on here with that code we just created? Well, we've got a similar line of code here. So this is going to find the, the target row is going to find the data that relates to the person we've selected already. Then this nine is going to the column position. So we're going to move nine columns across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's going to take us to the children column. And then we're saying if the value in this cell, so if the value, for example, in cell K8, if we're talking about Julia Hernandez, if the value in K8 equals yes, 
then we want to make the Y button true. If that's not the case, then we want to make the N button true. So let's see what happens there. We've got a conditional statement there and then some very similar line of code to the code we've already used. And then here we're just changing uh, that option button to, to be selected or to not be selected. So let's give this a go. So Julia has no children. So edit, select Julia, hit continue. Okay, there we go, We've got an error message there. And I think this is going to be the same problem. We have to specify the user form here because it's not clear where this object is because the user form is not yet open. Let's be explicit about the user form there. Okay, let's just stop the code. Back to the spreadsheets, edit, select Julia. And remember, we're, we're looking for no children, for that to be accurate here. Okay, we've got no children there. So just for testing, let's change this to, to yes. And then Julia again, and we can see she now has children. Let's try one more. Alison should have children, continue, and we can see this seems to be working well. So there, we seem to have everything we need now. We've got um, the code that is going to allow us to work with text boxes in the user form. If there's a text box, this code is going to go into the database, find the data, find the cell that contains the exact data we want, take that data, put it into the text box. And a very similar line of code is going to work with the combo boxes we've got as well. So I'll be able to just take that code, tweak it for the text boxes and for the combo boxes. Now for the option buttons, we required a conditional statement. We had to configure both of the option buttons there. And the conditional statement seems to be uh, getting the job done. So what have we done there? Um, we've allowed the user to select a record uh, in the database. Then we're going to the database, finding the data that relates to that user, and then flashing it up in the user form. Now, we've only looked so far We've only looked at a few elements of the user form, the first name and the surname and the children buttons. So between the videos, I'm going to complete the code and you could try this as well. Complete the code, get it populating the whole user form and test that against the database. Do some testing. Is it accurate? If it's not accurate, then do some debugging and tweak that as best you can. So we seem to be getting progressing well through this task, but what's next? Well, we want the user to be able to hit the continue button if they're editing an entry in the spreadsheet. We want them to be able to hit the continue button and then for the information in the user form to go into the database, but not at the bottom of the database, which is what we did in the first few videos. We want the data to go into the specific row that this person is on. So that's our next coding challenge. I hope you'll join me in the next video.